Amazing grace. forgiveness for all of our transgressions we pray that you would guide us and promote healing in our bodies minds and souls we rejoice in your salvation thankful for the supreme sacrifice that you made at Calvary that made it possible for us to be children of God keep us guide us, lead us to that way of everlasting. We ask, O oh God, for uh, your rich blessings upon the sick and the shut-in in particular. 
We pray that you would regulate our minds and our hearts. Keep us, O oh God, that we might be steadfast and uh, more committed to your cause and your purpose. Bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to call your attention today to the gospel as recorded by the Apostle John, chapter 18, verses 36 through 38. We want to reason with you with the subject, what is truth? Three main points we want to emphasize. First one being the kingdom of God. Point number two, the king. And point number three, the truth. I want to read a few of those verses uh, beginning at verse 37. Pilate said to him, are you a king then? Jesus answered, you say rightly that I am a king for this cause I was born and for this cause I have come into the world that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in him at all. Jesus said to his disciples in John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. In other words, don't allow your heart to be stirred or agitated. The disciples had reason to be troubled. Jesus had just told them that one of them was a traitor, that all of them would deny him. Yet Jesus told them, let not your heart be troubled. Jesus never promised us that we would have a life without trouble. But he did promise that we could have a, that we could have an untroubled heart even in a troubled life. Even when we are perplexed, we can be calm because of our ultimate, because of our intimate relationship with Jesus. Let me say that again. Even when we are perplexed, we can be calm because of our intimate relationship with Jesus. John chapter 18, verse 32, Jesus explained why Jesus was delivered by the Jews to the Romans. Jewish execution was normally by stoning which broke bones. The Roman method of execution was crucifixion. Jesus' method or the method that they used to execute Jesus as instigated, instigated by the Jews, it was crucifixion which was a fulfilled prophecy, which stated none of his bones would be broken. John chapter 19, 36 through 37, which is also quoted in Exodus chapter 12, verse 46, Numbers 9 and 12, Psalm 34 and 20.
The prophecy also stated that B, that is to include both Jews in the collective guilt for the deeds. Acts chapter 2 verse 23, chapter 4 verse 27. See, Jesus would be crucified, lifted up like the snake in the wilderness. A person under curse was to be hanged on a tree as a sign of judge sin. Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 23, Galatians 3 and 13. John chapter 18, verses 33 through 34. Pilate um, had a private interview with Jesus. Verses 33 through 38, A clause. He realized that the Jews would not normally turn over one of their own to the hated Romans so something was strange about this case. According to Luke chapter 23, verse 2, they accused Jesus of three things. Subverting the nation, that is, undermining the power of the government. Opposing the payment of taxes to Caesar. And claiming to be Christ, a king. Pilate began by asking Jesus if he was a king of the Jews. Jesus stated that his kingdom was not of this world. Since Jesus spoke of a kingdom, Pilate said, you are a king then? Jesus answered that question in the affirmative and then clarified that his kingdom is a kingdom of truth. He said everyone on the side of the truth listens to me. Jesus said that he came into the world to testify to the truth. How did we, the world and even in our churches, get so far from the truth? Pilate asked the question, what is truth? This question has echoed down through centuries. Did Pilate really want to know what is truth? Apparently not. For if he did, he should have pressed the issue further. Was his question philosophical cynicism? That is, did Pilate have a general lack of faith or hope in Jesus or Jesus' motivations? Did he have a lack of faith and hope in Jesus' opinions? Or did he think Jesus' statements or his opinions and motivations were unobtainable or meaningless and therefore deserving of ridicule or admonishment? Apparently so, for Jesus was mocked, he was ridiculed, and he was admonished. Pilate, turned away from the one that is, in fact, the truth. John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Having displayed a lack of interest in truth, 
Pilate then revealed lack of commitment to justice and fairness. He lacked the courage of his convictions. Pilate began a series of compromising moves to avoid dealing with an inconvenient truth. Lies are convenient to avoid, to avoid adhering to what is right, which is truth. The word of God is truth. Jesus is truth. They marched the truth to Calvary. The truth died for your sins and mine. He died, but he got up. Didn't he get up? Even his own that he came to rejected him. They reject the truth of his character. They reject the truth of his word. They reject the truth, truth of his teaching and his preaching. And the world still rejects the truth, the sad thing about it, even sometimes those in our churches and our conventions deny the truth. And as I said before, lies are convenient for avoiding, for avoiding adherence to the truth. I love the truth. Do you love him? I love the word of God. Do you love it? Do you appreciate the fact that the truth died at Calvary? Do you appreciate the fact that the truth shall set you free? Do you appreciate the fact that he said that I am the way and the truth and the life and no one comes to the Father but by me. Do you believe in the truth? Do you believe that lies has short legs? Do you believe that the truth shall prevail? Because Jesus is truth. Jesus is life. Jesus is the creator. Jesus is the one that was resurrected. Jesus that one day is coming back for his church. Jesus, the truth and the life. Do you love him today? Do you have an intimate relationship with him? Do you live a life that depicts truth? Are you willing to be engaged in the process of evangelism that lead others to truth? Are you willing to be engaged in the process of sanctification that causes us to be sanctified and matured in the truth? Are you willing to stand for what is right and know that the truth shall set you free? If you love him today, if you have an intimate relationship with him, if you recognize the fact that uh, he is the vine and we are just the branches, if you recognize the fact that we need to abide and stay attached to him because that's where we get our substance and our life, do you recognize the fact that he's coming back for the church? If you love him today, say yes! I will trust in the Lord, I will trust in the Lord, I will trust in the Lord till I die, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord.
Till I die. The door of the church is open for a reception of members by letter of Christian experience or by candidate for baptism. Won't you receive him today? Won't you trust him? Won't you recognize that he is truth? Greetings to our Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church family and friends. To God be the glory. We want to thank you for tuning in and viewing the services today. And we want to thank you for your continued support of this ministry in your viewership and your generous giving. And we pray that you will continue to view each week and continue to give generously to the ministry. Thank you, honey. I join you in uh, acknowledging that God has been so good to us and we ask his continuous blessings and our safety. I pray that he will continue to bless us and keep us safe. But throughout uh, the coming year, and years to come. May God richly bless each of us.